What's going on, everybody? It's How To Tuesday today. I got my friend Connor here with me. Connor is the one responsible for editing, producing, and distributing this podcast. So he is behind the scenes on every single one of them. And uh, recently, he also shoots video. And uh, he's a pretty good shooter. And we took him down to the Florida Keys. Really, he'd been down there a couple times before, but you went down this time with the job of being a shooter on saltwater experience and actually on into the blue too. Um, so he got to see all kinds of stuff. Connor's a fisherman himself. And as we're kind of driving back, he has a bunch of questions, you know, like the, for the first trip that he's ever, ever done to the keys really on a, on a pretty serious fishing excursion. And um, so I thought a lot of the questions that he had are really good uh, topics for how to Tuesday because the questions that he have has are probably the same questions that a lot of people that have only been to the keys once or twice or or planning their first trip to the keys or maybe even go there all the time maybe they still have a lot of these questions so we're gonna we're gonna talk about that so you had a question about the tides yeah so I mean most of the fishing that I've done growing up is all freshwater so the whole idea of how the tides work is pretty new to me. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, so like we were out on, I guess the ocean side and it seemed like there was plenty of water out there. Then we moved back into more of the back country and it's kind of like a completely different story. Right. So how exactly does that all work? Um, okay. So the Florida Keys are a chain of islands that are 150 miles long. The ocean side's on one side. The back country would be the Gulf side or the back country side. It's going to have all the islands in there. You can go all the way back to Flamingo, all the way down to Key West. There's going to be islands all in the back country. So if you imagine that the ocean side, I mean, basically all the tides in the Keys are basically based off of the Key West tides. And the Key West tides are going to be... Let's just say you have a, a, a high tide at 12 o'clock. So the entire length of the Florida Keys is going to be a high tide at roughly 12 o'clock. Maybe it's a little bit earlier or later all the way in Key Largo, but it's just going to be minutes of a difference because the ocean just pushes in like this and all that water just comes in and pushes in. So a high tide in Key West is not going to be terribly different than a high tide in Isla Mirada or Key Largo. That's very straightforward. So if you're coming down for the first time or you don't know how the tides work, if you stick to the ocean side, it is very easy to understand. The tide comes in at the forecasted time. It goes out at the forecasted time. The tide, the forecast is a NOAA forecast. There are tide stations all around the Florida Keys, but the one that is in Key West is kind of the, the main one. It's become much easier to get a forecasted tide because now it's on our Lawrence GPSs. You can look. There's tide stations everywhere. You can hit the nearest tide station. The nearest tide station will actually pop up. When I first got down there, that didn't exist. Everything was based off Key West, and we had to memorize the tide differences in the backcountry. So now I'm going to explain the, the way that the tide works in the backcountry. As the tide comes in like this, it now has to filter through channels, banks, around islands, around banks, around everything. So let's just imagine that you take your bathtub and you make these dams with um, washcloths all the way down your bathtub, right? And you turn the water on slowly and it just starts to slowly fill up here. Well, back in the back of the bathtub, there's no water, right? Mm -hmm. And this isn't a real, you know, it's not like a concrete dam. Like some water's leaking through, and eventually it starts to go over that first little dam of washcloths. Say you have like 8, 10, 12 washcloths that you've kind of made made into a little dam all around there. And they can flow around the washcloths on the outsides, or it can go and it can permeate the washcloths and go through. But this is a good example, and the one that I kind of thought of, and I never heard anybody else really say this, but if, if you turn the water on, it's going to fill this up, and then it's going to start to overflow into this one. And then it's going to start to come around, and the tide's going to be in, in this one, or the water's going to start to fill up. Still, there's no water back there. And if you put a watch on it, and you turn this on right here, it's going to be 
right here would be Key West, where the water's flowing out of the, the faucet. It's filling this up right under the faucet almost immediately, straight up. So it's going to take like immediately, it's high tide. Well, way back there at the back of the bathtub, it might take two minutes depending on the strength of the, of the flow. And we can have the different strength of the flow depending on the moon. You can have the different strengths of the flow depending on the wind and the barometric pressure. All of those things affect the strength of the tide. So if you have a really slow tide, very little water may ever get back there. But what will happen is it will filter around all these washcloths. Eventually, it will go over, and eventually, it will just be high tide everywhere. But then if you were to pull this plug, which water is going to go out first? Right over the top of the drain, right? There will still be some water back there. So that's kind of a good simulation. So the, the tide in Key West um, is, is four, it, well, it's four hours later to like Snipe Key in the back country, okay? There's a four-hour tidal difference. So when it's high tide here in Key West on the ocean side, four hours later, it's going to be high tide in the back country. And then each of these tide stations has um, a, a, a difference. You may move a half a mile, and it may be only three hours difference. You may move a half mile in a different direction, and it may be five hours difference. You may go some places where it's seven hours difference. And so you just have to kind of, when, when I was first learning, you just had to kind of memorize all of that. As a kind of a rule of thumb, you could say, okay, well, it's going to be a roughly four hours different in the back country. And so if you were just looking for water, like you're going to try to go fish around the mangroves or something, it's high tide here at, at 12. Well, if we went back there at four, it'd be about high tide. So that's one way to do it. You can get an entire list of all the tide stations, their exact locations, their exact um, tide forecast on the computer now, on your Lorance, on everything. So my advice if for somebody that was just going down there would be to kind of concentrate on the ocean side first, kind of understand the tides, how strong they are, how big they are, and then work your way into the back country and know where you're going and where the, where the closest tide station is. And then you'll have an idea of there, but you can be on high tide and it can be low tide, not very far away. And that's, that is some people would be like, Whoa, that's, that's terrible. That's the best. Because if it's just high tide on the ocean side, you only have one tide to deal with. Like if you want to, it, it opens up so many opportunities and, it, and, and really that's one of the, the reasons why the Florida Keys is, is the best is because you can go and chase a different tide um, pretty much anywhere. So if you're running out of water in the back country, it, it, the tide's dropping and it's now it's low pretty much everywhere you look in the back country and you're just looking for a place to fish, there's going to be water on the ocean. So you can run out to the ocean and you can fish and there'll be, you know, uh, uh, that the tidal difference is one of the things that makes the Florida Keys the best. It's also what makes the Florida Keys one of the more difficult places to kind of understand and get to know. And there's a learning curve there. But once you get that learning curve, you can use that tidal difference to your advantage and you can end up catching a lot of fish because of it. That, you know, a place that only has one tide might, that's, that's what you have. You got that one tide and that's it. So like when you're planning out your day, I'm assuming it's a mixture of both, but how much are you looking at the time of day versus the tide and how does that play into how you plan a day? Well, you're, you're looking at those things and you're also looking at what, what fish species you want to catch and which and 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 both of those things kind of determine like pretty much out of any any uh marina you go one way or you go the other you go north south east or west and um you know let's just say in key west you can go west of key west or you can go east of key west east of key west is going to be in the back country there's going to be a lot of tidal difference there west of key west is not going to be as much tidal difference and there's a lot of different fish that you can catch in both places but if somebody was to say you know i want to you know, fly fish for permit. Um, you know, you need, you know, a permit is a, is a big fish. It needs some water, right? So I like like a high tide in the middle of the day. So you're going to fish the incoming tide in the morning. You're going to fish the outgoing tide in the afternoon. There's going to be water to fish on the flats pretty much 
all the time. Like that's great. If you have a low tide in the middle of the day, man, there's some places where you could go and there's not a lot. Your options are now really small. Doesn't mean you can't catch fish. There's just not as many options. So maybe that means that if there are a lot of boats in the area, everybody's fishing where the, where the spots are. If there's more water there, it gives everybody more opportunities to fish. And so you can spread people out on the, on those lower tides. There's, there's a ton of people. So you're using, um, time of day. You're using, um, the, the tide forecast. And then you're also looking at things like the wind, you know, the wind and the tides are the re- are the way that you plan your day for whatever it is that you're going to fish. And sometimes those two conditions together are very favorable conditions. Sometimes one is very favorable, but the other is not favorable. Sometimes both are kind of unfavorable. Like if it's blowing 30 out of the north and it's a low tide, that's going to blow even more water out. Now it's going to be super low tide. Um, maybe that's good. Maybe it's not. Everybody figures uh, a way to, to fish in all of these different conditions, but you know, it's just a, you, you take all of those factors into, into your decision making. Okay. Cool. All right. So, uh, if you're headed down to the keys, if you have a similar question, uh, you know, I hope, I, I hope that's a good answer for you. The tides are something that you can really spend, you know, your life learning and, and understanding and really figuring out the nuances of these tides in the Florida Keys, like the way that the tide at a certain, at a certain, um, strength will flow a slightly different current and, and it may make the fish be in a slightly different place than others. When you're first starting, you don't even notice those things. 15, 20 years later, you, you, you key on those things as the biggest thing that, that determines where you're going to fish that day. Um, and, you know, people that just get started, they, they catch plenty of fish. And people that have been there for a long time catch plenty of fish, too, because there's a lot of fish in the Florida Keys. But the tides and the tidal difference are something that, you know, if you're having trouble understanding it, it's cool. Lots of people have trouble understanding it. You can use the published data. You can use charts. You can take a chart. And I used to take a chart and actually draw the current, like an incoming tide goes this way on this island. An incoming tide goes this way on this island. For whatever reason, an incoming tide is going a different way somewhere else. And uh, I used to have red arrows for, for one and blue arrows for the other. And just I could just look at that chart and kind of get a big, better idea of what was happening everywhere. And you can also get a really good idea of the tidal differences. But if you don't aren't good at memorizing stuff, sure you can have it on your phone you can have it have a piece of paper in your boat you can do whatever and you can have published information on the tidal differences between the tide stations and that's an excellent way to get started all right that's how to tuesday for today we'll see you next week